continue our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Very happy Fourth of July to all of you this Sunday as we come together to celebrate the blessings of this past week. Let us prepare ourselves as we enter into these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you call us to repentance from our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Holy One who leads us to holiness. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have brought glad tidings to the poor. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest and on earth be to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heaven God Almighty Father, glory, glory, glory to God in the highest and on earth be to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only be God. Speak! 
Let us pray. God of justice, Father of truth, who guide creation in wisdom and goodness to fulfillment in Christ your Son, open our hearts to the truth of his gospel, that your peace may rule in our hearts and your justice guide our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Our reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Heart of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God. And whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 1132. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, number 1132. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. To you I have lifted up my eyes, you who dwell in the heavens. Behold like the eyes of slaves on the hand of their Lord. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Like the eyes of a servant on the hand of her mistress, so our eyes are on the Lord our God. Show us his mercy. Our eyes are fixed on the Lord, pleading for his mercy. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. We are filled with contempt. Indeed. All too full is our soul With the scorn of the arrogant The disdain of the proud Our eyes are fixed on the Lord Pleading for his mercy A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. 
I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus departed from there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said to him, Where does this man get all of this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and among his own kin, and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deed there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, last night I was jamming out to my Fourth of July summer mix on my C- on my radio, and I was uh, one of my favorite songs came on there. It's a song by uh, the musician Joe Cocker. Do you know him? Find a little help for my friends, right? You guys, okay, good. I'm dating myself, so you guys all know. Everyone's nodding their heads. But the the opening line to the song is, "What would you do?" If I sang out of tune, would you stand up and walk out on me? I'll let Paul sing it if you want, but no, no, okay. Sounds. I won't sing it either. So, but it's a it's a song that talks about friendship, and I think for me, it's it's probably one of the most um, profound songs that speaks of of what true friendship really looks like, and just what all kind of comes with that, and. Uh, in this song, Joe is, is really speaking about when, when times get tough, you know, what is, who are you able to turn to? What is it about your friendship that makes it something that is reliable and trustworthy? And I think that we could carry that over into many of our relationships, whether that be with family or friends, with coworkers, or even our church community. The question kind of remains the same. What, who can you turn to when times get tough. In our gospel reading today, we see Jesus returning to his hometown, a place where he had grown up, a place where he had many friends, many people who had known him over the years. And he began to teach them on the, on the Sabbath, and he taught in the synagogue as one who was having authority, and he shared his knowledge with those around him. And they were astonished at what he was saying, but the reality was that they really 
weren't amazed so much at what he was saying, but they were surprised at who it was coming from. They were shaken. They couldn't understand how this carpenter's son, this, this son of Mary, this brother of James and Joseph, all of these relatives that they knew intimately, how in the world was this person able to speak with such eloquence and, and share the good news with them? They took offense at what he was saying because they knew who he was. They knew him intimately from his birth. And they were surprised that somebody like him could come into their, into their community and to begin to preach and to teach them and to call them out for the ways that they had chosen to live their life. We know that the scriptures can be extremely challenging, especially in Jesus' time when he was calling them to live according to the law of God. It was not an easy task. And so these individuals must have looked upon Jesus and said, how is he able to call us out? We know who he is. We've seen him. We've watched him grow up. Who does he think he is? I think many of us face these same challenges in our own lives. The same challenge that Jesus faced when, when we want to share the good news, whether in our words or in our actions, we face these very same challenges in our workplace, in our homes, with our families and our friends. We are challenged by them who know our past, who understand our history who look at us not as saints, but maybe even for some of us, they look upon us as sinners. And they question, how are you able to share this news with me? And that question resonates in our hearts and it, it wells up within us, but it creates a deep and profound sense of fear. And anxiety. And I think many of us are paralyzed by the fact that people do know us in our lives and they know the mistakes that we've made and we fail to share this good news with others because of our past. But Jesus rises above that. He calls us out of that and he recognizes that a prophet is not without honor except in his native place and that oftentimes when we try to teach others, when we try to share the faith, with those who are closest to us, it's rejected. I know for a fact that for many parents sitting in the congregation today who have adult children, this is one of your most difficult things. I know that many parents grieve the fact that their sons or daughters have fallen away from the faith a little bit, that they've gone astray that they no longer attend church or they no longer practice a faith that has been so meaningful to you. I know that many adults lament the fact that their children no longer attend church services or participate in the communal life of the church. And this brings great sadness to their hearts. But we are standing with Jesus today as St. Paul reminds us that it is in our sufferings that we are closest to Christ. Just as Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith, he did not allow that to deter him. He still felt called. He continued on, sharing the good news. He did not allow it to stop him from making sure that everyone understood what it meant to have a deep and personal relationship with God, a relationship that is founded on that prayer that we say here every week, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It is a beautiful reminder for us today that we may face great adversity when we choose to share the good news of a, as a follower of Christ. But we know that Jesus is forever with us. In our second reading today, St. Paul, as I mentioned, laments the fact that he is afflicted with this sin. But he also realizes that even in that weakness, he is made strong. Even in that weakness, he is made strong so that he may go forth and share the good news with others. And how often is that true in our own life? 
when we find ourselves struggling, when we find ourselves at our weakest point, when we find ourselves at that breaking point in life, we turn to God and we know that Jesus is with us. He is the one who navigates us, who calls us out of darkness into a newness of light. And that's why we gather here. That's why we come together as a community of believers. That when one of us are at our weakest, we can turn to the person that is sitting next to us in the pew, and we can know that they have our back. Because even when we find it that our life is a little out of tune. We know that the Christian community will not stand up and walk out on us. That the Christian community will remain ever faithful to all of us. And that no matter how far we have strayed, no matter how far our relatives and friends may distance themselves from the church, no matter how much they may look upon us as Individuals who are absolutely crazy for believing what we believe, well, we know that God is present. We know that God is the one who leads us. He is the one who lays down his hand for us and takes us up out of our darkest moments. And so today, let us celebrate this great prophet. Let us recognize that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ who did not shy away from opportunities to speak the good news to his family, to his friends, and to the ones who needed to hear it the most. Let's all please stand then and profess our faith together as we have the confidence and the freedom to say, I believe in one God. My dear friends, we know that God is always generous in giving us the help that we need, even if we don't always realize it. We come now with faith, recognizing our own needs and asking God for his generous help. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that she may always be a welcoming home, especially for the lost and forsaken, let us pray. For our country on this Independence Day, that it may always stand as a beacon of hope in a darkened world, offering refuge to those who seek a better life, let us pray. For all people living in this land that God has given us, that we will respect God's creation and with faith and trust in the Lord, grow in charity for one another, let us pray. For those who dedicated their lives to the protection of freedom throughout the world, that they may be rewarded with honor and respect, let us pray. For those who have died this week, Gerald Steffes, and especially for those remembered at this Mass, Rita Dieter, let us pray. Loving God, you know what we need better than we do. Open our hearts and our minds so that we may recognize what you are asking of us and give us the faith and love that we need.
to be your prophets, even in the smallest of ways. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 955, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Number 955. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry. pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. He spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned a nation where we might live as one. His message lives on in our midst as, we, as our task for today and a promise for tomorrow. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
For at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you, and let us offer each other a sign of peace. Oh, uh -huh. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 828, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace, number 828. Let us pray. By showing us in this Eucharist, O Lord, a glimpse of unity and joy of your people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy, that all who believe in you may work together to build a city of lasting peace through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for our announcements. First one I'd like to make is that everyone is invited to welcome our new priest, Father Justin Weber, to the parish next weekend when he celebrates the 4 p.m. Saturday Mass here at Holy Family, as well as the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Mass on Sunday. So we invite you to please come and welcome Father Justin to our community. Give your children a faithful and fun experience by enrolling them in the Vacation Bible School Children going into, going into grades pre-K through sixth grade uh, this fall will learn about Jesus through crafts, Bible stories, plays, music, and other things. Uh, the program runs from August 2nd to the 6th, so to register, please visit our website. Registration will open this Wednesday for Holy Family School Year, Faith Formation, and Sacramental Programs. 
Families can sign up for our yearly faith formation programs for grades one through eight in high school. The first reconciliation, first communion prep and confirmation preparation, uh, you're able to register on our website beginning July 7th. So for more information, please contact our parish office. And finally, we continue our sessions on caring for your body with Mary Jo Newman. July 12th is the next one available for everyone. Please call our parish office to register. Um, I normally don't promote uh, outside charities outside of the church because, well, we're a charity ourselves, right? But um, I did want to talk, uh, highlight some work that Sam Skiff did uh, this past week. Um, Sam, you were uh, part of this ruck march that took place, right, uh, through the state of Wisconsin. Could I have you please stand for a moment and maybe, um, would you mind coming up and sharing with us a little bit about your adventure? Um, Sam and a group of four other individuals, I believe, marched 140 miles, um, and I'm going to let everyone have a chance to learn about that a little bit, and uh, you can use the pulpit so they have a microphone, but uh, this wasn't planned, by the way. Uh, yeah, right here. This wasn't planned, so he's, uh, I'm putting him on the spot, so. Well, I'm very glad that I wore my shirt this morning. <laughs> Thank you very much, Father. Glad you have a shirt on, too. <laughs> I think everyone is. Yes, so this past week uh, I led a team of four uh, ROTC cadets uh, from Green Bay to Milwaukee uh, to raise awareness and funds for veteran suicide prevention and mental health. Um, this is very dear to a lot of our hearts, um, especially mine. Uh, being in the National Guard this past year, especially with COVID, um, we have seen a great uptick in suicides uh, among military personnel. Um, and it's very hard. Um, so just uh, this past week, uh, we walk around along Lake Michigan. Uh, it's 140 miles. The average is 20 miles a day, which is significant for the 20 military veterans that commit suicide every day. Um, so we're out there walking many hours a day. It's very huff, tough on the body. Uh, it's very tough on mentally, but then uh, it's at those times that you remember what the military people have to, have to live with every day when they come home after what they see. Um, so we're just trying to get the word out. Uh, we're trying to do what we can to support them. Uh, the sponsor of our of our Ruck March is the Fourth Hua organization from Green Bay, and they do great work with offering veterans community. So um, thank you for allowing me thank to you. give an announcement. How can everyone get involved if they wanted to? Um, I can stay in the back a little bit after if you would like to talk, um, or if you go to our website at Fourth Hua, that's the number four, T-H, uh, Hua, H-O-O-A-H, -H, uh, Wisconsin, if you look that up, and then there will be, uh, that's our website. Uh, you can find our, our link, our event on that, um, which is the Green Bay to Milwaukee 140 mile ruck march. Um, if you click on that, that'll give you a better description, better than I could do in the two seconds that I had to prepare. <laughs> um, that'll give you the description and then there's a place to donate at the bottom if you wish. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. He wasn't joking about the sacrifice. He's got sandals on today, but I know you weren't wearing them uh, when you were marching. Um, they had pictures of the blisters on their feet and, and just how painful that uh, must have been. But what a beautiful sacrifice that you made and uh, that your fellow um, service people made in, in making that march. And so I figured on this 4th of July holiday, it's very appropriate for us to give thanks to God for all of our servicemen and women and everyone who have sacrificed so much for the wonderful freedoms that we enjoy here in the United States. And so we give thanks to God for their blessings today. Let us all please stand and pray. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God the Father who has called us to be one human family fill your hearts with deep longing for peace and harmony. 
May the Son of God who came to share our life and make us children of the one Father enable you to grow in wisdom and grace before God and the human family. And may the Holy Spirit, who is the bond of love between the Father and the Son, unite in love all here present. May he be the bond of love among you, our nation, and all peoples. Amen. Make this last amen count, and, then, and uh, may God, God's blessings come down upon you this day and always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. let us go in the peace of Christ. Our closing song is number 984. America the Beautiful, number 984. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea O oh, beautiful for pilgrims feet whose stern impassioned stress a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the way